Welcome to Trial Site News Weekly Roundup. On today's episode, we talk about Delhi's COVID-19 provider, Lok Nayak Hospital, which cut Fava Perovir and added Ivermectin and Remdesivir for its COVID-19 patients. Then we talk about a prominent Brazilian university which embarks on a phase two Ivermectin clinical trial. 13 promising COVID-19 treatments emerging from Israel, including Ivermectin, and more, and evidence for hydroxychloroquine as a lifesaver, but CNN casts its doubts. And at the end of this episode, I'll be reading some of the comments that a few of you have made on our previous episode of the Weekly Roundup. All of this starts now. Trial Site News covers research initiatives worldwide. After all, it is a small world. Now, we recently looked at yet another hospital in India where the provider's protocol supported ivermectin as a COVID-19 treatment. Lok Nayak Hospital is one of the first COVID-19 only providers and recently announced it was dropping the antiviral medication favapiravir for Avigan while approving off-label use of ivermectin for early-stage COVID-19 patients, as well as remdesivir, tocilizumab, and plasma therapy. So what happened here? Well, Lok Nayak Hospital had approved the use of favapiravir for mild to moderate COVID-19 cases, but the side effects, including lower appetite, diarrhea, increased uric acid levels, and lower white blood cell counts can impact the ability to heal damaged tissues and increased liver enzymes, as reported by the National Herald India. Moreover, doctors at Lok Nayak Hospital observed that the use of the drug was correlated with QT prolongation, which means the heart muscle takes longer than normal to recharge between beats, and the uric acid concentration was of concern as well. The hospital's medical director, Dr. Suresh Kumar, approved the changes. The hospital decision-making body ultimately questioned whether there was enough data available on the effectiveness of favapiravir. Now, in the meantime, the Lok Nayak Hospital Committee has approved the use of three drugs, including remdesivir, tocilizumab, and ivermectin, as well as plasma therapy for COVID-19 treatment. And so, here is a brief breakdown of each of the drugs and the four-member committee rationale for its decisions. Remdesivir. Now, remdesivir was approved for moderate cases of COVID-19 if the patient exhibits no response to steroids and oxygen therapy. They suggested not to mix hydroxychloroquine with remdesivir as it could interfere with the antiviral's action. They do have reported remdesivir side effects such as nausea and high liver enzymes. Of course, caution is recommended on renal patients, children, and pregnant and lactating women. Then there's tocilizumab. Now, this immunosuppressive is used for moderate to severe COVID-19 patients, particularly if there involves a hyperactive immune response, or the cytokine storm, in the body. Now, should TB patients be involved, the committee recommends caution, in addition to those with systemic bacterial and fungal infection and those on a different immunosuppressive therapy, such as for some form of cancer. Also, doctors there in India warn against using tocilizumab if tests indicate higher levels of liver enzymes. And then it's ivermectin. Now, although the hospital's committee acknowledged that the only true evidence for ivermectin comes from laboratory evidence as an inhibitor of the COVID-19 causative virus, it should be considered for hospitalized patients as it is A, cheap, B, available, and C, known to be safer than other drugs. Approved by the US FDA for parasitic infections, its only side effects are fever and skin rash. The hospital undoubtedly has been monitoring all the ivermectin clinical trials now off the ground, plus the significant building observational evidence from multiple countries. Lok Nayak Hospital suggests ivermectin can help in limiting viral load and prevent severe disease progression. And finally, plasma therapy. Lok Nayak Hospital will continue with plasma therapy, but the exclusionary list will grow larger. 
For example, patients with cardiopulmonary comorbid diseases, liver disease patients, chronic kidney patients, patients under 18, and those older than 60, those that are obese, pregnant patients, and others will be excluded. And now we move on to the next story of the Roundup. The Federal University of Sao Carlos, a public research university located in Sao Carlos in the state of Sao Paulo, Brazil, has about 15,000 undergraduates and about 4,700 graduate students. Ranked among the top 10 universities in Brazil, the research arm just initiated a phase two clinical trial investigating ivermectin as a therapeutic treatment against COVID-19. So let's take a step back here and look at the context. Brazil has emerged as a major hotbed of COVID-19 activity, only surpassed by the United States. With just over 1.5 million reported cases and over 62,000 deaths, COVID-19 causes patient suffering and death combined with overburdened hospitals. Therapeutic conditions are desperately needed. The current approved drugs, such as remdesivir, are quite limited in that it requires hospitalization and intravenous administration and only condenses the amount of time hospitalized by a few days. Now, developing new drugs from scratch is an incredibly expensive long-term proposition that, given the imminent nature of the crisis, isn't really a great option here. Now, aside from remdesivir and favipiravir, Russia, China, and India, there are no antiviral therapeutic options approved just yet. Now, based on this reality, the university has looked extensively at the literature which reveals evidence of in vitro antiviral activity of ivermectin against the coronavirus. Of course, that is a far cry from clinical evidence, but a growing amount of anecdotal and observational real-world evidence also points to the possibility that ivermectin could be safe and effective for treating COVID-19. But given that there is still a knowledge gap, dozens of universities have commenced studies, including this one in Brazil. So let's talk then about this study. Led by Henrique Pott Jr., this important clinical trial titled Phase II Clinical Trial to Compare the Efficacy and Safety of Different Doses of Ivermectin in Patients Diagnosed with the New Coronavirus Infection, or SARS-CoV-2, commenced at the 1st of July, 2020. Now, this study is enrolling 64 participants, and it commenced July 1st with preliminary data expected by December of 2020. So the study includes five arms, which include the standard treatment for COVID-19 and four ivermectin arms. And you can check the article out for more details by going to trialsitenews.com, or you can click on the link that we will provide in the description below. And now we shift from Brazil to around the globe to the Eastern Mediterranean Sea, where recently trial site news reported on 13 potential treatments in that country targeting COVID-19. Now, out of the 13, I'll share a handful for this episode. And of course, I will provide a link in the description below. So if you wanna see the entire list, just follow that link in the description. Now, some of the treatment under investigation include a regenerative cell therapy called Pleristem. It's a Jerusalem-based Silkim pharmaceutical company which recently submitted Corinzat, its novel treatment for COVID-19 patients with moderate to severe symptoms, to the FDA's Investigational New Drug Program, or IND. Now, Corinzat's novel mechanism targets a pivotal factor in cytokine storms. It removes an inflammatory overaccumulation of labile iron and replaces it with a minute amount of gallium, or zinc. And then there's Red Hill Biopharma, now, Red Hill acquired Opaganib from U.S.-based Apogee Biotechnology, which developed this oral drug to fight cancer, inflammation, and viruses. Now, Red Hill has seen some encouraging preliminary findings from six Israeli COVID-19 patients given Opaganib under compassionate use to reduce lung inflammation. All were weaned from supplemental oxygen and discharged from the hospital without having to receive mechanical ventilation. Red Hill plans a multi-center, randomized, double-blind, parallel arm, placebo-controlled phase two and three clinical study on 270 U.S. patients with severe COVID-19 pneumonia. And then Inocan. 
Now, Inu Can Pharma, Israel, and Tel Aviv University Tech Transfer Company, Raymond, are collaborating to develop a new CBD-loaded exosome technology to fight lung inflammation. And exosomes, small particles created from stem cells, can act as homing missiles targeting specific damaged organs and facilitating cell-to-cell -cell communication. Combining the cell healing properties of exomes with the anti-inflammatory properties of the cannabis-derived compound CBD is expected to have a strong synergetic effect. Now, the treatment is administered by inhalation. Sterobiotechs. Now, Sterobiotechs of NIBRAC has started a small clinical trial at Rabin Medical Center in Pata, Tikva, on the tolerability, safety, and efficacy of a CBD enhanced steroid treatment for hospitalized COVID 19 patients. Steroid treatment is usually the first or second line of treatment for hospitalized patients. CBD enhances the therapeutic effect of steroid treatment and treats the biomechanism affected by the virus. And then Aibna and Canasol. Now, two Israeli cannabis R&D firms, Aibna Technologies and Canasol Analytics, are developing a proprietary terpene formulation for modulating cytokine storms. Torpenes are organic compounds found in cannabis and other plants. Studies suggest that they can be effective antiviral agents. Canasol aims to identify other cannabis molecules capable of suppressing a cytokine storm in response to COVID-19 without completely suppressing the immune system. It is also studying how cannabis molecules could modulate the ACE2 receptor, which allows the virus to inject its genetic expression into human cells. Kamera. Now, based in Rehovah, Kamada has begun supplying its experimental plasma-derived hyperimmune IgG therapy for compassionate use in severe COVID-19 cases in Israel. The treatment is based on plasma donated by recovered Israeli COVID-19 patients. Now, one critically ill patient at Hadassah Medical Center showed initial improvement after having the experimental IgG therapy, but ultimately did not survive. Ivermectin. Now, the Sheba Medical Center's Eli Schwartz, a leading topical medicine researcher, is bullish on ivermectin, conducting a randomized controlled study with the antiparasitic drug as the study drug. Now, for the complete listing of the 13 potential treatments, as I mentioned earlier, we will provide a link in the description below. So if you want to go see it, it is down there and it is worth the read. And now on to our final story of the roundup. Now, we reported back on July 3rd about a Henry Ford Health System retrospective study which found a significant reduction in death for those treated with hydroxychloroquine over a non-treated group. Another recent study in France, not yet peer-reviewed, it's found on preprints. Published online on July 3rd, entitled COVID-19 Outpatients Early Risk Stratified Treatment with Zinc Plus Low-Dose Hydroxychloroquine and Azithromycin, a Retrospective Case Series Study, the paper looks at 141 severe COVID-19 patients who received the triple therapy, which is zinc, low-dose hydroxychloroquine, and azithromycin. Findings included that 2.8% of the treated group were hospitalized, compared with 15.4% for the control group. The conclusion notes that the treatment of COVID-19 outpatients as early as possible after symptom onset with the used triple therapy, including the combination of zinc with low-dose hydroxychloroquine, was associated with significantly less hospitalizations and five times less all-cause deaths. Now, on July 2nd, an article in CNN stated that a surprising new study from Henry Ford found the controversial antimalarial drug hydroxychloroquine helped patients better survive. The findings, like the federal government's use of the drug itself, were disputed. They note that many other studies have found no benefit and also negative cardiac events. FDA's EUA was pulled and many trials around the globe were halted. Method problems in the Ford study were pointed out. Concurrent steroid use could account for the findings, and the persons with heart problems were screened out. Other issues were also raised, and an expert tells CNN that there's a little bit of loosey-goosiness here in all this. Now, as an apparent afterthought, CNN notes that Trump's trade advisor, Peter Navarro, has praised the Henry Ford team study. Now, in sum, CNN notes legitimate concerns about hydroxychloroquine research. 
Yet, with that network's constant anti-Trump content in mind, perhaps we acted too early in pulling the plug on widespread hydroxychloroquine research and treatment. Is that a possibility? And finally, before wrapping up this episode, I wanted to give a few moments to acknowledge a few of the comments we received on our last episode of the Weekly Roundup. We read all the comments we get, although we cannot respond to them all. But in the meantime, here are a few messages from some of our viewers. First up, we have Ben S., who asked, how did ivermectin compare to remdesivir? Now, we replied with a link to a story that we covered that would help break down some of the choices, including remdesivir, which it so happens we covered in this episode today. Next, Zegarak, Robert, had some feedback on how we could improve our video's presentation. Robert, we appreciate the feedback. We'll certainly put it into consideration. Then there's Bo K., one of our regular audience members, and he comments that anyone reading his comment can help him start a study. Best of luck to you, Bo. Kyler Bourne says, very good video, thanks, we appreciate the truth. Thank you, Kyler. We strive hard to always report the facts, to break down the complex and make it available for as many people as possible. And finally, AG, another one of our frequent commenters, says that at this point, he has given up on hydroxychloroquine and seems inclined to look to ivermectin as his treatment of choice. So what do you think? Is AG right? What do you think about ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine? We'd love to know what you think about these two drugs. And that wraps up our weekly roundup. Thank you all for taking the time to watch our episode. As always, we appreciate you and look forward to seeing you next time.